Food materials are processed from basic food sources, being harvested and then processed before being sold to the consumer. Meat comes from animals that have been reared for this purpose. Fruits and vegetables are harvested then sent to processing factories. Flour is milled from cereal grains. Sugar comes from sugar beet. And milk from cows is used to make butter and cream. All of these are processed before they reach your shopping basket. Processing ensures that bacteria and molds are removed before the foods are eaten. Once they're processed, foods are bought by weight or volume. Fresh meat, vegetables and cheese are sold by how much they weigh in grams or kilograms. These measurements are used in recipes to specify the amount of food needed. Some foods are sold and measured by volume, being measured in litres or millilitres. You can use common kitchen utensils such as cups and teaspoons to measure quantities. A food designer must consider the nutritional value of the food components or ingredients that make up the finished food. Each ingredient will provide different nutrients which our body needs to work properly. No one food provides all the nutrients we need, so we need to eat a balanced diet with a mixture of foods to get the amounts needed by our body. Nutrients are divided into five groups. Carbohydrates, fruit and vegetables, protein, milk and dairy, and foods that are high in sugar and fats. This is commonly seen as the Eat Well plate, which has been developed by the Food Standards Agency to help the UK achieve a healthier diet. Choosing foods from each of the food groups every day will help your body to remain healthy and function properly. A balanced diet includes proteins, which include meat, fish, eggs, beans and meat replacements such as tofu and soya. Proteins are needed for our body to grow and repair itself. Carbohydrates are bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and other starchy foods. They also work with the proteins to help us grow and repair ourselves. Foods that are high in fats and sugars are needed in smaller quantities to provide us with energy and you need a certain amount of fat in your body to keep you warm, your own insulation. Fruit and vegetables provide us with vitamins and minerals to help prevent illnesses, control the release of energy in our bodies and control how it works. Milk and dairy products also give us protein, but they are a good source of calcium as well to keep our bones strong and healthy. Food ingredients and final items are available in different forms by using preservation methods to extend their shelf life. Preservation of the food destroys or prevents the bacteria from reproducing in the food. Fresh foods like fruit and fish taste good but don't last very long. Pasta sauce and fruit juices are sold as liquids and baked beans in soup are canned. These can last for months or even years if they are unopened. Foods can also be dehydrated. The moisture is removed so the product lasts longer, for example dried apricots and pot noodles. Freezing, where you store food at minus 18 degrees Celsius, stops bacteria and moulds growing so the food lasts longer. Some food ingredients have properties that are useful in the manufacturing of food products. For example, butter adds flavour to foods like shortbread, adds colour to pastry, and when rubbed into flour to make pastry and biscuits makes their texture short and crumbly. Other fats, such as vegetable or olive oil, enrich the flavour and texture of sauces. When making a white sauce, flour acts as a thickening agent, making the sauce thicker. Sugar has many uses, from preserving in jam to a sweetener in foods and when heated, it caramelises, forming a sweet, sticky brown liquid. Eggs may look simple, but they have many useful working characteristics. They are used to glaze pies, as an emulsifier in mayonnaise, helping the oil and water stay together. They thicken when cooked to set a quiche, trap air in cakes called aeration, bind mints in burgers together, and coat or enrobe foods such as chicken with breadcrumbs. How a product turns out depends on the ingredients used and how they react to each other. There are four ways of combining ingredients to get new characteristics. A solution is when a solid ingredient dissolves in a liquid, for example sugar in water. When you add a solid to a liquid and it doesn't dissolve, it is called suspension. For example, 
When you mix flour and water, it forms a cloudy suspension. When a smaller amount of solid is added to a liquid, for example gelatine in water, this can set the liquid and form a gel. Examples are jelly and chocolate mousse, or the natural gelling agent pectin that sets fruit jam. But what if the liquids do not want to mix together? If an oily liquid and a watery liquid are together, they will usually separate, unless you add an emulsifier to stop them separating. For example, egg yolk is used in mayonnaise to keep the water and oil mixed. Processing a food can also give new characteristics. Whisking traps air. For example, whisked eggs are used in meringues. Mincing or grinding a meat changes its texture. For example, minced beef. Slicing and grating can change the way food cooks.